effect. Um, but um, here, yeah, I feel it's, um, I think I'm, I'm much, it, I think it will probably suit me better um, because it, the, the long, cl the climbs are very long, like three, four miles, but yeah. five, six, seven percent, I think that'll be fine, right? Um, so you just write them in, you know, sweet spot, uh, that, that sort of, yeah. Not the 30% from the Fred, <laughs> huh? Exactly. <laughs> Well, so, hey, just in case I post this on the bigger site or anything, I'm here with uh, with Fedor Shulton, who is going to do the the Dragon Grand Fondo this weekend. Is that the, the right name of it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it is in, in Wales. Uh, so you're coming, you're traveling from, from London to Wales. It's a little bit of a distance and, and uh, you're going and the event itself is 135 miles. And you want to, you want to tell us? Yeah, it's a um, it's a really nice route um, in sort of southern Wales, um, going into um, sort of the the more mountainous part of of southern Wales, um, and you know there's even a a, a longer distance um, of nearly three hundred uh, k, but um, <laughs> still, us in the club are doing the the, the two hundred and something k, right? Okay. So, it should be should be fun. Yeah, yeah, nice. And what's the elevation? I think eleven thousand feet. Eleven thousand feet. All right, cool. And so, is this your first go around? No, you've been doing crazy rides, and maybe not this long, but uh, but you've been. This training will be quite the longest ride I've ever done. But in elevation, yeah, it's very similar to the Fred Witten I did earlier this year. Exactly. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So the Fred Witten was a shorter, shorter, but uh, equally demanding with uh, steepness and everything. So you're feeling, feeling prepared. Well, so um, uh, that's cool. Well, let's, let's get into this. Let's, uh, I, I, I usually have a checklist and I think you do too. And I think let's, let's just go down through it and hopefully that's, that's helpful. And uh, uh, I'm going to share this. So I, I found the, the, uh, give me one second. I'm going to share my screen and hopefully we can. Ah, there's the dragon. Can you see that? Yep. And does that look like the right, the right route? I just yep. did a search. I know you sent me the file, but I think on ride with GPS, it was easy to find, uh, somebody else had made a route. So you're, so you're, uh, looking at your start finish, you go up and you're going, uh, looks like clockwise big circle into this area and uh and here's the the profile down here what i'm sure you've studied this way more than me what what um what are you looking at when you when you see this so the first 25 miles keep it steady <laughs> um which will always is always it well for me all when i say always that was definitely a challenge for me on the fred Witten. i started yeah. too quickly so it's all about saving the legs. And I would say even saving the legs for that first hill really goes slower than I, I, I really want to ride uh, so that I really save my legs for um, the first sort of big climb, which you see around the mile 50. Yeah. Because um, really from that point onwards, it's up and down, up and down. There's almost no flat. And this is what you're talking about. These are about three three miles. Yeah. So you're going from uh, right here, 46 miles, all the way up to to 49 miles. Yeah. So anything that's like this, you're going three miles there, and then yeah, you're right. It's it's all up and down. It doesn't look like there's anything flat. Yeah. And so really, that really, I sort of mentally, I sort of think from mile 50 till you know mile 115, that's where you need to expend most of your energy. And then the last 20 miles to the finish is a really nice long descent. Um, now we just really effectively uh, riding uh, back to the coast. Yeah, so, no, that looks awesome. Nice uh, and not too steep either so that you're going to be grabbing your brakes, but like one, two, even some zero, uh, but but up here a little bit steeper with the five, five percent ish, seven percent, a little bit, nothing too, too steep where you're where you're worried about. And uh, and if you're going along 
if you see the dot up here, it doesn't look like it's too, too twisty. Maybe a couple of turns here. A couple yeah. of, of swip, switchbacks on, on these downhills. So you do have to be careful of those. And I'm sure you've zoomed in on this big time. Yeah, Two but turns. It, that in a way, so it means the last 20 miles, right? It, yes, you need to be a little bit careful, make sure you don't go too fast on some of the bends, but it's it should be a nice last 20 mile uh, descent. Yeah. Oh, that'll be great. That'll be good payoff. And so right here, when you're at a mile 110, 111, you're, you're going to start your last climb, which is uh, uh, 110 up to 115. So the last climb being, being about five miles, that's kind of brutal, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but uh, not uh, also not so, so steep. So yeah, if you're, if you've saved properly and paced properly and, uh, and, and, and uh, saved a little bit of energy, which I, think you're feeling pretty confident that you can do you've done enough rides in the hundred mile range that uh that you're probably feeling pretty confident with that distance and elevation yes yeah um yeah i've done this would be now my six 100 mile plus right this this year so yeah, yeah i'm getting you know each ride i do of that length i feel yeah stronger and stronger so and um, this again is a bit longer that I've done, but um, yeah, I feel okay. So fitness wise, we think you're, you're looking good. Any other demands, uh, any other thing, a a anything else about the course that you'd like to go over? I mean, it's uh, fairly challenging, but yeah, you're going to have to go out there. It's not one, one you've seen before. It's not like you've done this event yeah. before, uh, but anything else about the course? That, no, that I think um, I, I, Someone in my club uh, wrote in that sort of vicinity uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said the roads are better than where we ride on locally. So again, that should be helpful nice. too. Um, so now it's really from from my perspective, the, the the you know the the weather will be uh, I think nice. Will be actually very similar to the weather we had in the Fred Witten. So hopefully okay. we'll now be adjusted more to the to the temperature so it's yeah really nice bad. i'm going to ask you specifically the weather in, in in a second but uh just just the demands of of the course overall have you have you seen any videos of of the turns or anything some of these turns look like they could could be challenging and and uh if you see these coming ahead of time you know riding there there's some skill to ride in to ride in these uh and depending on where you are within a group uh are, are you are you looking forward to those or, or thinking yeah, about no, I, there's i the the people who've done it before in my club they they say like it's it's you know with the fred written are loads of places where you need to watch out and yes okay here it's it's uh i, I think because it's less steep uh on the on the descents uh-huh so it, it's much more manageable Sounds like a good, good uh, event for you to get into. This being your your second event, uh, yeah. and, and a good challenge. Cool. Well, so can I flip over to um to your training peaks? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and we'll just go through that real quick. Uh, da, 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 hang on. Uh yeah. Let's see. Oops. Here, can you see your training peaks? Yeah. So the thing I wanted to show here or, or go over with you here is that, uh, and and I, I uh, pointed this out to you yesterday, I believe, is that your fitness number is super high. Your fatigue number at the end of this week, even with this event thrown in there, will be, will be super high, but your form is still going to be be nice and and uh and positive and you've done a nice job at bringing that these numbers up to positive uh, have you been watching these over the past couple of weeks and and do they go along with how you how you felt yeah definitely i think if you go one big uh, that week i had a this long one. 10 mile ride yeah we did that at a very good pace maybe less elevation but to really sort of you know stretch and push, um you know, our, what we can do within that time frame. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I feel, you know, once you sort of do this, 
um, then uh, yeah, I feel ready now for the yeah. For the Right. Looking good, looking good. So you did this 110 mile ride in uh, about six hours, little under six hours um, with a group, right? Uh, with a group, yeah. With with yeah. a group. And so so you from from rides like that, you can really zero in on on what your what your demands or what the actual um, what the actual event's going to be. And so let's get to that in one second. But just I, I wanted to to touch on these numbers again and see if, if you had any more insight as to how you're feeling regarding these, these numbers. And I, I brought this up to you, uh, your performance management chart. So the blue, the blue line being your fitness, see how it kind of teases up and comes back, teases up and comes back, teases up and comes back. And it's just really nice with, uh, the way you've, you've teased it up without really overdoing it. Uh, not really pushing any, any big, huge rides that you weren't ready for uh normally if if you were to to do that we would see a red dot way up here out out in outer space but you've you've done a nice job at keeping the intensity uh being the the blue dots the intensity the the training stress scores and your weekly training stress scores the pink line and therefore your your chronic training load or your your fitness overall in a nice elevated time, but then stopping maybe right here about the beginning of June and starting to come back down to land on a nice peaked out, fresh, uh, fit condition. And kudos to you to keep me in check. A right? <laughs> couple of check. times as my job is, Oh, don't go too hard. Don't go too hard. You've got a nice big, big fitness. So, uh, this is a cool chart. Anyway, this is, we can make this, from the past, uh, I mean, this is from November till till now. Uh, yeah, I think that's a. We don't need to look at it, but you can see, like, you you know, earlier on in in uh, November, December, we were focusing on other things and bringing this down. I think you had some ski trips, but then, yeah, this is your whole whole season so far, bringing your fitness up and teasing it up, teasing it up, recovery, teasing it up, recovery, and then landing right here at uh and at your other event which was uh back last month um i think maybe this was it the the 12th does that make sense yeah that's it that's yeah it. um so landing there at a nice fresh uh a uh, uh, fresh period also and then and then hitting this one nice and ready to go so anyway that's, that's a cool chart and my question was do you, does that go along with how you're how you're feeling do you do you, <laughs> any 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 reflections on on this and versus how you're feeling? Yeah, look, it's it's interesting. Like, um, yeah, you know, if my my fitness of seventy or seventy five or eighty now feels a lot more manageable <laughs> than a few months ago. Yeah, and and so I feel much yeah fitter than I did at at that time. Of course, my fitness was a little bit lower then, but dealing with the um. Yeah, how do you call them these these uh, these weeks in, you know, in which you overdo it a little bit? And overload weeks, yeah. Overload weeks. I feel better now to 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 do them than than I used to. Yeah. So I think it 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 really does take quite a while for your body to adapt and adjust, but it does. It just does. But you need to be really patient. Especially when you're taking uh, red eye flights around the world for work and and uh, on planes and in different time zones and uh, illness and just all of the life demands that set in. So yeah, it's it's uh, you do have to be patient, but you also have to give your time your body time to recover, given the demands of everything that's going on. So I think you've done a beautiful job. It's going to be uh anyway I, i'm glad that what you what you're feeling is going along with this chart because uh probably what you're feeling is is way more important than what a chart says <laughs> but yes. but it's nice to have them in sync <laughs> uh all right cool well we've looked at the the um i have to say also greg during that entire period i've also been much more careful in what i eat and drink oh super I barely, barely touch alcohol now Great. But also I'm very careful with you know what I you know what I eat and just being mindful of eating good stuff that really helps my training and recover, etc. 
super, super, super important. Makes a huge difference. You can't eat junk food and and compare and expect to recover from the from the demands of training. And uh, so so that's awesome. So the uh, we've looked at the demands of the the course, the event coming up. Uh, your training and you, uh, the charts and you say that you're ready. <laughs> and uh, then what's what's it going to be like on the day of uh, of you have to travel? Uh, you, you're going to travel the day before, two days before? Yeah, we're traveling uh, Saturday. It's only two, three hours. So OK, so it's not bad, but you'll stay overnight. Yeah. yeah. OK. And then uh, we, we were meant to start, at least in our group, between uh, around, around about eight o'clock in the morning. OK. Uh, so that's our wave. Uh, All right. It's, it's four and a half thousand people. Whoa. Um, <laughs> four different distances. So it, it will be quite crowded. It will be crowded. All right, cool. Well, so what's the weather going to be? Um, we're starting off, I think, in the low. In, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but in Celsius, we're starting in the low 10s. Oh, no. <laughs> finishing up in the low 20s. So okay. I think that. that... 70s to finish off that. So. Yeah. I I think that sounds perfect. If I recall, yes. when I uh, travel overseas, we set the set the temperature at like seventeen or so. is is nice and comfortable, right? Yes. That's okay. Right. That's, okay. It's so ten, ten yeah. is going to be nice and and cool for the morning, huh? So what yes. what will you wear for the for the beginning? Will you have to change? Will you have to uh, take take layers off? What what will you wear to start at ten I degrees will, Celsius? To me, anything above so from ten upwards, I don't. I, I just I'm, I I'm, I I don't need anything. Good. So even if I'm a little bit chilly at that time, perfect. You know, once you start going, you your body temperature raises and you feel fine. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, especially because you have climbs coming up pretty pretty soon, and you're you're not going to be going super fast and uh, and downhill. Sounds sounds great. Okay, so good. So only, that only question is whether I take a rain jacket in my back pocket, but. Um, again, it, it will totally depend on the weather forecast. If if it really is not expected, then I'm going to risk it. Yeah. Uh, again, save a bit of space for gels and stuff in my in my jersey. More gels, know. yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so 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 that quite straightforward actually. Okay, temperature wise, then great. What about winds? And yeah, you mentioned rain. Is is rain in the forecast or 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 it just exactly. always is? Five ten percent chance at the moment, so but it's quite variable still. So we'll okay. see. On the is it going to be windy, or is it normally pretty pretty calm? No, I think it's manageable. So okay. So again, um, I'll go with my deep deeper rim wheels, and yeah, if it's windy then tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. I I think uh, I think it sounds good. All right, so weather. Uh, and then you, you you touched on your your overall nutrition, but what about fueling for for the day? What uh, what have you landed on? You've been practicing this for for a long time too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna def and uh, particularly for the later stages in the, in 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 the in the ride, I I've, I've, I find I really need it, and so I'm gonna go again, sort of 80, 90 grams of carbs per hour, and again starting off with you know the more sort of conventional um like, like bars and stuff in the beginning and then later on you know before climbs i'll take on a gel or a chew and really this really the sugary stuff to just yeah. get a bit of just... but yeah this is uh, i found that on the fret even though i got cramps later on in that ride i think it was more the weather than anything else it was hot that um, day it was hot and it was the just the severity of the gradients and so here i, I i'm hoping it will be more manageable. How how long are we figuring you're going to be on your bike for 135 miles? Uh, I don't know. Strava says seven hours, but <laughs> I think it will be less than eight hours. Okay. So, so seven to eight hours so and 80 to 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour in the form of gels and bars and the drinks. Uh, yeah. Are there are there rests? rest stops along the way to to reload and refuel well, four. And, yeah, yeah four so quite a lot so okay but then i'm gonna really put a lot in my jersey because you never know what what you're gonna get at those stops and yeah. we're not gonna doubt we're gonna stop at all of them 
Right. No, that's, yeah, that's, that was my next question is which ones, what, do you have a plan of which ones to stop at? Maybe the middle one, maybe the, maybe the last one. Uh, yeah. do, you have, do you have a plan exactly. as a team? Not yet, but I, I suspect we'll see how we feel and how we go. And okay. we're in a group of seven, so it's, it's a sizable group. Okay. And we're all quite equal in terms of pace. So it should be a nice group and we can nicely, you know, take turns uh, on, on, on leading the group. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. Uh, that's great. And and that'll get into tactics. But so fueling, hydration, sounds like you've got a, a good good plan. Do you know how much fluid you need to drink per hour in ounces or in, in water well, bottles? I, or? I'm definitely one, I tend to drink less than many of my my friends. Um, but yeah, I've never had I've never felt really dehydrated. So okay. Again, I'm thirsty. Is my yeah. sort of so I have two bottles. Yeah. And I'm sure I need to refill them, but probably just once. Okay. So two bottles and then two more bottles. Yeah. That could be, be could be four bottles for eight hours. Would be would be on the low end, you are correct. <laughs> on the low end. Pay attention. See how you're feeling. You're right. The temperature is not going to be too high, but uh but but think about if if you could fit some extra in but obviously you don't want to try new things on on event day but maybe that's an area where you could little tweaks might might help um all right cool uh you know this being a heat wave here in in the US it is it is hot i just got done with my workout i'm all uh red and i had to postpone on you i've got a thing of ice water here and when I used to race in the extreme heat, like like it is now, uh, it was water bottle over the head, drinking, uh, stopping at, at a river from time to time. So it doesn't seem like you'll need any of that, but uh, but just beware here in the summertime that, that that can happen. It sounds like you'll have nice weather and not have to worry about any of that. <laughs> uh what about tactics have have you and your team talked about are you going to stay together you're going to wait for each other you guys all seem to be similar abilities and train together uh that could be very unless, uh, some, uh, unless something extreme happens i think we'll stay together and we sort of said until certainly until the the last 20 30 miles and then there probably will be you know everyone for their own i like it uh, up until then it's uh, yeah we're going to try and take the benefit from yeah being in a group and helping each other out um we are also very again we've all had issues with pacing up early on so and particularly on these long climbs um we're limiting ourselves to 3.6 watts per kilo okay uh, <laughs> for and for so the leader so if you're in a train in in a in a uh you know, a drafting train, then, then, uh, the leader needs to keep that under control. And the further back you are in that line, the more benefit, even going uphill, you do get quite, quite a benefit. So, uh, uh, 3.6 kilograms per, uh, watts per kilogram for, for the leader or overall or average or, or for the leader. So that's around sweet spot for, you know, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's great. Okay, cool. Uh, I like that. I mean, that's, that's great tactics is take it easy on the hill, use each other, stay in a line, uh, watch out for, for gaps in the line. And that's a long time to hold a line, but you guys train together every, you do long 60, 70 mile, 80 yeah. mile training rides, uh, together as a team. And so that's, that's great. I think you guys will, will really benefit from that versus doing it solo. Um, can I pull up your, uh, your training peaks again? We'll just look at this. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, calendar. Uh, you pulled up this um, best bike split, yeah? Yeah. And, and it came up with this structure for you. <laughs> yeah, look, it's interesting, right? Um, I <laughs> I tried to ride last weekend with best bike split, but I, I just didn't really work for me. So yeah. I, I, probably just be more focused on making sure you're sort of limiting the high end. Um, yeah. um, but, you know, it's interesting that you can do it, but on such a hilly terrain, 
right uh, undulating terrain it's like you, you're constantly needing to to change your your your, your zones that's your pretty power. good though actually i mean look at that the the looking at the at the elevation and what best bike split was telling you to do uh i would say that's pretty pretty spot on i mean best you can do maybe maybe riding a little bit above what what you're supposed to do most of the time yeah yeah. So my point about best bike split is, is that, yeah, that's cool that it can come up with it, but, uh, just like most plans in cycling, especially in a race, you can, you can plan all you want and then you get to the race and you crumple up the plan and throw it away almost instantly. Cause you have to react to the other riders. You have to, to, uh, uh, you, you have to race the race, you know, as it unfolds and there's no, no telling what it's, what the other racers are going to be like, but you guys have a good plan with your, your team. And, uh, I think that sounds like you're, you're doing good. What are your expectations? We talked about time, any other expectations or goals you talked about under between seven and eight hours, anything else? No, I look, I want to feel not that I'm bonking at the end. I, I, I th that's it. So I want okay. to feel reasonably good when finishing the ride. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but other than that, just have fun and enjoy, enjoy and enjoy the day. Enjoy the day. Well, there's not, uh, there, uh, that's such a great way to spend the day. What do you do? What happens afterwards? You cross the finish line and is there a meal? Is there a gathering? Is there, what happens afterwards? Yeah, there is a, um, um, there will be some food and we'll be there. I'm sure we're having uh, some drinks, but then uh, yeah, we need to go back to, to London then. Because uh, again, it's still two, three hour drive. So. Right. Are you driving alone or are you driving as a team? How's Yeah, with my brother-in-law. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the two of you drive back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. That's awesome. What else are you thinking about? I think you've got it down. You're looking looking and sounding good. I can't wait. What, what else are you thinking about though? No, I feel much more relaxed than the Fred. I because it was obviously that was the first time ever. And so yeah, I think I know what to do. I know how to uh get my bike ready and yeah, I know what to bring. So yeah, just looking forward to it, really. That's a good point. The bike ready. What uh what do we need to what do you need to check on the bike? I'm sure it's in tip top shape. I've I've put my uh my race uh tires on, uh, yeah, which only used for the Fred, so the brand new basically new okay sealant, uh, put new big um, brake pads on in the back because uh, i don't know i seem to go through them pretty quickly <laughs> um, and with the long descents here i just don't want to take a risk yeah um, but the rest it's yeah it's all all fun got it all uh, cleaned up and and yeah. uh and feeling good so all right well that's awesome man fedor i think you're you're on i'm super excited to see see how it goes you're gonna you know, share a link with me so we can, so yeah. uh, me and the step up crew can, can, can follow you. Yes, we'll do. We'll do. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Any, any advice for anybody else doing, doing a, a big advice event for, for the, for the pre getting just ready? Just do it. It's just, um, I think you get so much out of it. At least I love them. Um, again, I'll be, I, I'm, <laughs> as I say that, I hope I won't hate this <laughs> one, but I doubt it. Um, yeah, I think just go and do it. it no way. I think fun. I think the feelings you get leading up to something like this after you do a few of them, you get uh, start knowing that you're supposed to be in peak form. You just start feeling on top of everything. That's how I, I feel. It's just I, I can do anything and it's just such a good feeling. Then you go out and do it. And you're like, uh, yeah, it's just there's no better feeling in the world. So Cool. Congrats on getting to this point, and I can't wait to hear hear how it goes. <laughs> and thank you for all the coaching, uh, Greg. Pleasure. Hang on.